In this tutorial, I'm going to show you all the different places you can add custom CSS to WP Bakery Page Builder plugin. You can do it on the page, in the element, in the theme options, in the plugin options. There's a whole bunch of different places. I'm going to show you which ones are good and which ones are bad. And this is part of the WP Bakery Page Builder playlist. You can get to that through a link in the description down below or through the card above. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, and you like WordPress tutorials and tips and tricks, click the subscribe button, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, if you like deals, check out the half off hosting deal I negotiated for you with InMotion Hosting. Nearly every plan is half off, some are less, but every plan has a discount that you could use for yourself or for your clients or whatever. Feel free to go check that out in the link down below or the card that popped up. And with that out of the way, let's head to this tutorial. There are three places to add CSS directly into the WP Bakery Page Builder plugin. I'll tell you which one is the best of the three, which one is okay, and which one's the worst. Let's start with the worst. So we're gonna to go to page and then add new. I'm gonna create a new page and add some elements on there. I'm gonna call this page custom CSS. Click on save draft. I'm going to open the front end editor. And this way of adding CSS I'm gonna show you right now is like I said, it's the worst way. And it only works on a handful of the elements. And that is the text block. There's three variations of the text block element. This works on all three. So if we add a text block, and there's our content right there. We can actually go to the HTML tab and add CSS right in here. So if we make this text bold and we add in style, I should do a span. Let's do a span. Style color is red. And let's just do that whole sentence. Close the span at the end. Click on save changes. We're gonna have red text right for that for that text and there it is red. And this is called inline CSS. It is the worst way to do your CSS. I don't recommend you do it, but in order for completeness, this is how you can add custom CSS. And there are times I've encountered where you have to get the project done quickly. It's gotta be done quickly and it's gotta be done quickly because the client is very impatient. And I admit I have added inline CSS before just to get the thing done. And then you can always go back later if you have time and, and fix it. And sometimes there is no time. I, either way, try not to do the inline CSS, but sometimes you have to. Another option is on the page level. So that, that was individually right there is where we added that CSS. What we can also do is click on this gear icon and have custom CSS specifically for this page. So if we go back into this text block, let's add another span. Actually, let's add a extra class for the whole thing. Let's call this um, text block. Click on save changes. Now it's going to add a class name to this text block. Now we can go to this gear and we can type in dot because it's a class text block. And we want to make it make all the text bold. Click on save changes. Now all the text is bold. This is a much better way of doing your CSS because you can add all your CSS rules right in one area. These rules can be applied to multiple selectors, not just a text block. You can just add a comma and then have another selector. And then it adds the bolding to that selector as well. So this is much better than putting it in line. So if you have to do it in line, try to move it into something that's page level. You'll thank me. If you want to do it even better and not even do it in page level, close out of here. I'm just going to save this draft just in case I want to come back to it in a couple minutes. Nothing that nothing that you do on this page actually is saved until you click on save draft or publish. So once that's saved, we'll go back into the dashboard and we'll head down to the WP Baker page builder and click on custom CSS. This CSS applies to all page builder websites, not non page builder websites. And by having this CSS in here, if you have say 100 pages you built with page builder, and all your CSS is here, it's much easier for you to manage and make changes later on. So this is the best place inside this plugin to make the CSS changes. Sometimes you can do even better. There's a bonus fourth place where you could add CSS. I'm running the Divi theme on this site and Divi, if you go right down the bottom here, 
Go to the theme options for Divi. Not just Divi has this, a lot of the modern themes have this. Somewhere in their theme options, Divi is on the very first page at the very bottom. There is a custom CSS area. And this CSS is applied to every single page that's loading the Divi theme, which is going to be all the pages that also have your page builder. So you could put all your WP Maker page builder styles into your main CSS for the whole site, and that's likely even better. So to quickly recap, if you can, do not put your CSS inline. Put it at the page level if you have to. If you can put it at the plugin level, that's even better. And if you do it at the main theme level, that's even better. As you may or may not know, WP Bakery Page Builder is a paid for plugin that you buy from Code Canyon. You may have received it built into a theme, so you may already own it. If that's the case, I have a course that you might be interested in. It is a complete WP Bakery Page Builder course that shows you how to use all the elements and create awesome pages with it. I can give that to you at a steep discount because you already have this plugin. Just email me at bjorn at wplearninglab.com and let me know and I'll send out a coupon code to you. If you do not have this plugin yet, but you want that course, if you buy the plugin through my affiliate link, which is in the description down below, you can have the course for free. And buying it through that link does not make it more expensive for you. It's just that Envato and WP Bakery, they give me a portion of their sale. So it's no extra cost to you. They just give me a portion of their sale. And in return for doing that, I will give you the course for free. All you have to do is click on the link in the description down below. Make sure you open it in cognito mode or in a different browser or after you clear your cache and cookies. Otherwise, my account may not be credited and then I, I can't tell if you bought it or not. Uh, but when you do buy it, you will get a receipt. Forward that receipt to me at bjorn at wplearninglab.com and then I'll cross-reference your receipt with what is listed as referrals on my account, what's been credited to me as referrals. And if they match up, I will send you free access to that course that you can begin accessing immediately. So that's how easy it is. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the half off for hosting deal in the description down below and possibly in the card that popped up if I had any remaining cards. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.